The Iraqi Prime Minister has accused Qatar and Saudi Arabia of effectively declaring war on his country. He says they're funding Sunni fighters in Anbar province, an area the Iraqi government is struggling to bring under control. Well, those comments were made as at least 35 people were killed by a suicide bomber in a minibus in the city of Hilla. Imran Khan reports. The twisted frame of the security checkpoint is testament to the power of the blast. During rush hour traffic, the driver of a minibus packed with explosive detonated his cargo. The drivers and their passengers didn't stand a chance. This is the main entrance into the mainly Shia city of Hilla, just south of the capital Baghdad. At least 50 cars were destroyed. One man, clearly shocked, describes the scene. The check post was very crowded when the bomb went off. There's so many victims, innocent people, police officers and other citizens. This police officer is going through people's telephone address books, looking to contact relatives and tell them of this attack. Violence continues to blight Iraq, and its Prime Minister is in no mood to mince his words. In a television interview on Saturday, Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki blamed the governments of Qatar and Saudi Arabia for funding groups in the country's western Anbar province, who, in turn, he says are responsible for attacks like this one. One analyst suggests that Maliki is playing politics. There is a really... Uh, internal problem in Iraq, and Rudy, uh, Mr. Al Maliki, Prime Minister Al Maliki, has an internal problem. He is not able to reconcile the differences that exist between the different groups. So it's very easy to blame Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and other countries. Elections are slated for late April. Security will be on top of the agenda, and Iraqis fear that attacks like these will only increase. Imran Khan, Al Jazeera. I'm joined here in Doha by Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He's Qatar's former ambassador to the United Nations and to the United States. Good to have you with us uh, at Al Jazeera. So the Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri Al Maliki is accusing Saudi Arabia and Qatar, as you know, of openly funding uh, Sunni Muslim insur insurgents. And let me just quote to you what he's saying: "I accuse them of inciting and encouraging the terrorist movement. I accuse them of supporting them politically and in the media." Your response? Well, I think Al Maliki is. Uh is a man who is running away from the trouble he made. Uh, I, Qatar, and for that matter also Saudi Arabia have nothing to do with what's happening in Iraq. It was Maliki who a few months ago said, this is the war, it is the battle between Al other, it is the battle between Hussein and Yazid, i.e., he is taking us back to the 7th century, in the 21st century, in order to legitimize the killing of his own uh, people. So Maliki now is, is, is trying to put the blame on, on outside countries, but he only the one who, should, who, who is responsible for all the mayhem in Iraq. He's also saying that both countries offer money to recruit fighters in Fallujah, areas like Fallujah in Iraq. Does Qatar pay fighters and recruit them in Iraq? I mean, does it finance rebels in the country? You see, no money going around the world other without being a threat. So if he has any evidence, he should show it to the world. He is, he is, he is fighting the same people who fought al Qaeda in Iraq. These are the Arabic tribes of Fallujah and of Ramadi. And these are the people who stood against the al Qaeda. And, and they really don't need any weapons from outside world because they have their own weapons. This is a tribalistic society. So he is fighting them. And after more than two months, using guns, tanks, copters, using airplanes, killing his own people in violation of international law, in violation of international humanitarian law, in violation of international human law, now he is uh, trying to, to blame it on other uh, states. So the blame really goes back to Mustad al-Maliki. Mustad al-Maliki should be in a court of law. He should not be the Prime Minister of Iraq. He created sectarianism. Let me ask you about uh, relations uh, with Iran in the context of uh, Qatar and Iranian relations. Uh, and do Gulf countries view Maliki as being very close to Iran? If it wasn't for Iran, Maliki wouldn't be the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister was supposed to be Mustar Ayad Alawi, 
but Iran forced Maliki on everybody, and unfortunately, the United States acquiesced to that. Okay, and can you comment in the context of uh, Qatar, Iranian relations and what they mean uh, for the region right now? Qatar and Iran, they are neighbors. We cannot change geography. Geography is the only mechanism you can look at and you can be sure to understand how the relation exists between two neighboring countries. Either they are in peace or they are in war. In our case with Iran, we've been having good relation with Iran for the past 60 years. So our relation is friendly. We have differences in a lot of issues. They understand our position. We understand their position. But when it comes to our relation, there is nothing really to worry about. And when it comes to Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Iran, do Saudi Arabia and Qatar, are they on opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to Iran? I mean, you were here with us a few days ago commenting on the withdrawal of three Gulf ambassadors from Qatar because of what seemingly seems uh, Qatar is on, uh, has, is on a different side when it comes to regional issues than Saudi Arabia. I assure you, when it comes to the relation between Qatar and Iran, there is nothing which will affect Saudi Arabia or the rest of the Gulf. Qatar, if there is an issue of differences between the rest of the GCC and Iran, will stand beside the GCC countries, including Saudi Arabia. By, and by that uh, matter, the same day, Saudi Arabia pulled this ambassador because the UAE did not really have an ambassador here. You know, for the past two months, they did not send any ambassador. So, you know, it's, uh, it's non-starter. But the same day, they announced pulling out their ambassadors. The Saudi ambassador just presented his credential to Mr. Rouhani, i.e. the president of Iran. Very briefly, I'll have to end this, but would you say that there is a sort of anti-growing sentiment uh, when it comes uh, to Qatar? Also, uh, there are reports, in fact, that the UAE and Saudi have asked their citizens working with Qatar media outlets uh, to resign from their jobs. Well, that really happened, but uh, uh, it has nothing to do with really issues between Qatar and these countries. It has to do with Egypt. And, you know, let us face it, that, that is the fact. Qatar is saying, I have nothing to do with Egypt, but I will never support dictators or killers of their own people. These countries, they wanted dictatorship to continue in, in Egypt, and they are trying to impose their own outlook and their own policies and understanding of the situation on Qatar and on the rest of the GCC. All right. Uh, good to get your thoughts. Thank you very much, uh, Nasser bin Hamad Al-Khalifa, joining us here at Al Jazeera in Doha.